like they would be you measuring distance like this like this they would be measuring distances either by their foot they would be taking distances uh, they would be taking the length of their steps right now or arms or hands or fingers so like this they were uh, taking measurements but was it a reliable method no no we can't rely right now it is an in it was an inefficient math, uh, method because the length measured from person to person will differ as the body size of different persons are different so they were in which year we adopted the international system of units when we adopted uh, si units i did told you that thing in the previous class 1820 no in the year 1960 we adopted si units all right now when in the year 1960 we adopted si units right so there was a conference of different scientists so they adopted the international system of units right now which is called as si units like this you can see these are the following si units which we have like kelvin meter ampere second mole kilogram and candela these are the following how many of them are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 these are the following seven SI units and they will be having some sub units also for example take consider meter meter it's a measurement of 100 equal divisions it is a standard unit of length meter is a standard unit of length and meter is divided into 100 equal divisions that is 1 meter equals to 100 cm getting it now and further we get to see that each centimeter will be having again further 10 equal divisions which we call as millimeter right now there were several uh, uh, what if you are required to measure larger distances in order to measure larger distances what are the units which we have meter kilometer uh, kilometer is there hectometer is there deca meter is there okay now so like deca meter in short written as dam so one deca meter is equal to 10 meter hectometer is 100 meter in short is called as hectometer the symbol is uh, small h small m the yes center is kilometer not uh, like for the long distance hmm. the most uh, Biggest uh, one is kilometer. Kilometer, okay, now huh? that is there. Basically, larger distances. When we talk about larger distances, now huh? we would be counting hectometer in it also. Decameter will also be counted in it. Right now, up to one meter, it's like you are. If in order to measure a small, uh, lens now we would be using millimeter, centimeter, and then meter. in order to measure larger distances larger measurements we will be using decameter hectometer and kilometer and then this one more unit it is not part of the si unit but mile so in one mile how many kilometers are there 1.6 kilometer okay now so you can note this thing down as well right <laughs> and they were we had several smaller units also like for example 1 meter you know 1 meter is um, equal to 10 decimeter right as i told you at 1 meter equals to 10 decimeter also we did did uh, we did practice some questions also how to convert units for example in order to convert millimeter into centimeter you have to divide with 10 so in each step you have to divide with 10 and be careful with the full form many times uh, we get confused about dm and dam this dm is actually decimeter okay and dam is decameter okay so let's do some questions practice some questions then we will move further and in the given table i have taken some numbers like you can see that uh, one decimeter is 0.1 meter So decimeter is actually one tenth of a meter, right? We can say that centimeter. We can write it 
it as 0.01 meter or basically one hundredth of a meter. Isn't it, Abu? Yes, sir. One hundredth of yes. Uh, sir, for uh, us, uh, like um, uh, in the portion, there is uh, uh, not measurement. There's only uh, mm -hmm. motion. Only motion is there. The different type of motions. Yes, sir. Okay, so all that uh, things related to uh, measurement is not there. The units of measurement, the parallax error which you have, zero error, all these things are not there. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Then we will switch to that thing. Okay, no. But anyways, this thing which you have learned will not go waste. Okay, now you will be use utilizing it somewhere. Okay, now. Uh, so just now keep this table in mind. This will be helpful somewhere. In mathematics, in mathematical calculation, that will be helpful. Okay. So just at least learn this one. Okay, now, uh, Abu. Learn this one. That is a very common thing. Okay. Solve two questions, then I will be switching to the motion part of the chapter. Okay, now. Hmm. Convert one kilometer into millimeter. One kilometer into millimeter. That will be how much? <laughs> Just count how many steps you have to take in order to get to millimeter in this figure. Sixty. Six steps you have to take. Right now, yes. you have to take six steps. One is ten, so sixty. Not 60 millimeter, it is actually you have to take six steps, thereby you have to multiply kilometer with 10 six times. One kilometer you have to multiply with six tens. Yes, sir, so that is 60. Well, that isn't going to be 60 meter. Now that is one with one, two, three, four, five, six, one with six zeros. One kilometer and sixty meter. Is there any equivalence in the two? How can one kilometer be equal to sixty meter? It's not practical. See, हम क्या करते हैं जब हमें एक step लेने होता है. When you have to take just one step, like you have to convert kilometer into hectometer. So you simply just multiply with ten. Okay now. Look. Sir, what uh, what should we multiply? What are we multiplying? We are multiplying with 10 here. Yes, sir. To 10 with what? 10 with this one. With one. This one kilometer. Had it been, let's say, had it been two kilometers. So you would be multiplying it with two. So thereby it would be two multiplied with 10 six times. So thereby it will be uh, uh... two with six zeros. So, sir, uh, like we can also do like this. Uh, uh, so, basically, there's uh, six times there's 10. So, we can take 60 multiplied by 2. We can take 60 multiplied by 2. No, look here. These are two different things here. You are having 6 times 10. I understand what you're saying. Like 6 times 10, it is 60. That is true. But 10 is 6 times multiplied to itself meaning that it's not like 10 is multiplied with 6 10 is being multiplied to itself with 6 times is the screen visible to you or not 10 into 10. yes sir it is now let's move step by step see in order to convert kilometer into hectometer you have to multiply with 10 right now. So thereby, let's say three kilometer in hectometer will be three multiplied with 10. That is 30 hectometer. Understanding this thing. Now further, if you are required to convert this three kilometer into <clears throat> decameter right now. So then you see how many steps you are taking one and then two right now 
So first of all, you have already converted it into hectometer, hectometer like 30 hectometer. Again, you have to convert it into decameter in order to do so. Okay. Can I say that first of all, I will convert from kilometer into hectometer. And then in order to convert into decameter, I will multiply it with 10 once again. So thereby, it is actually three times 100, 10 into 10, 100, that is 300. So three kilometer in, in decameter is 300 meter. It's a 300 decameter. Are you able to understand this thing about what, what we are doing here? Yes, sir. Huh? So wherever you have to move in this scale, just count how many steps you are taking. So with that many of times, you have to multiply it with 10. Right now, suppose if you were to convert kilometer into decimeter, into decimeter. So decimeter is how many steps away from kilometer? Count it one, two, three and four steps right now. So thereby what you will do, you will multiply three with four tens right now. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four tens. Hope you are able to understand this thing. Right. So thereby you are having this value in decimeter. So three kilometer in decimeter is this 30,000 decimeter. Okay, now. Okay, so let's yes, stop it here and then let's uh, discuss the next part of the chapter. So all these has been cut from the portion, right? Zero error and the correct way to take the measure. Okay, then. So let's to talk about the motion and its types. So motion, you understand what is basically motion. How do we define motion? How do you define motion? Motion is what? It is the state of the body in which it is continuously changing its position with respect to time and with respect to a stationary object. Getting it now? Okay, yes. define motion. Define motion in your own language. Motion is uh, something when an object moves. Motion is basically like a body will either be in two state. Either it will be at a state of rest and either it will be moving. So what is the, how do you distinguish between the two? Like I am sitting here. Okay. I haven't changed my position for the last 17 minutes. So thereby I am in rest state. Getting it now with respect to earth, with respect to my room right now. So I am in rest. Getting it, Abu. Okay, define it once again. You have to consider time in it also. You have to talk about time in this also. Okay, now. Motion is a, a body that... Uh... Motion is not a body. Let me correct you. It's not a body. Sir, you said body. No, no. When a body is at a, at such a state, state where it is changing its position with respect to time and a stationary object. Okay, now like a body can be having two states, a state of rest or a state of motion. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Uh, motion is a thing that... Uh... That is um, that changes uh, 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 changes its uh, its place uh, on the uh, duration of time. Okay, again, you have to be careful when you define it. Like it is not a thing; it is a phenomenon. Right now, things are like what things will be having a state now. Like it will be having a solid liquid or gaseous state, right? That is what things are. Things, when you say we are basically referring to matter, but motion in itself is a phenomena. Getting it now. 
so motion you can define it as a phenomena where the position of an object is changing over a time let me write this one write the definition you have to memorize it so motion uh, sir also the definition of self definition of uh, sir self C E L L cell found in our body. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, you want me to write the definition for cell? Yeah. Okay, okay, sure. Let me first write the definition of motion. So motion is a phenomena. Phenomena. Where the position of a body is changed over the time sir mm -hmm. uh, sir today was uh, uh, the asset exam which exam csat uh, asset exam yes okay okay so uh, was it being conducted by the school or any other body sir uh, the whole uh, like every single school in UAE. Okay, okay. Okay, so you had syllabus of, uh, the syllabus was what? Was it uh, only science or maths or other subjects were also there? Yes, sir. There was uh, math, science and uh, English. And English. Okay. What was the full marks and how many questions were there? Sir, there was 45 questions and uh, sir, the, <laughs> I don't know the marks. Okay, okay. Has the paper been checked yet? Have you got the marks? Sir, it is not uh, uh, on paper. Okay, okay. okay, sir, okay. sir, there's a link called uh, AssetDynamics.com. Okay, AssetDynamics. Yes, sir. Over there, uh, you have to put your uh, test code and then... Uh, and then your uh, ID, so like basically you uh, you will get the exam. Okay, 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 got it, got it. So it's like a talent search exam, I think. Yes, I guess. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. Okay, okay, got it. So whenever you get the result of it, okay, now please do let me know the marks. Sir, you won't get the result. They won't share. They just uh, keep it with me. Oh, okay. It's like that. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks for informing about that. Okay, now I will be I will be having a look at it and then similar to that, I will be asking questions to you. Okay, now. Good. So motion is a phenomenon where the position of a body is changed over the time and with respect to a reference point or say a stationary body stationary object right now so like with respect to earth right now i am in a stationary state i haven't changed my position time is changing time is increasing time is passing by but my position with respect to earth earth like right now earth for me for me, with respect to me, Earth is a stationary object with respect to me, right? But someone sitting on any other planet will say that Earth is not stationary. Earth is also moving. So thereby, I am also moving. So right now, when you see that in reality, I am not at rest. But for here, for the observers on Earth, for people on Earth, I am at rest. Getting it now. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, so the motion will also be of different types, like you have oscillatory motion, rotational motion is there, translatory motion is there, periodic motion is there, circular motion, etc. So these are the different type of motions. See, for example, look at the first part of this image. See, <laughs> See here, translational motion. So here you get to see that all the objects and all the things given in this figure, in the first figure, they are moving in the 
same direction right they are moving in a in a given direction so translation motion happens when all the parts of the body it's not like only one part of the body is moving in the given direction all parts of the body the person inside this car the vehicle of this car the frame of this car the window uh, window shell shield everything is moving in the same direction getting it abu right now so all of them are moving in the same direction and at the same time it's not like a uh, the person is moving ahead okay now in 5 minute and the car is moving ahead in 10 minutes it's not like that and both of them are actually moving in the same direction and in the given same time getting in what i'm trying to say <clears throat> so that is the translational motion for you getting it or not <clears throat> Sir. Okay, then second you have the rotational motion, so you get to see that in rotational motion now, the whole body of the object, the whole body of the object, is moving about an axis. Right now, so so for example, look at Earth. Earth has its own axis. Earth is having an axis around which it is rotating. Right now. or take a take a spinner like this see this is called as the spinning top right so a spinning top will be rotating across uh, rotating around an axis the central line that i'm drawing here so the motion in which a body is moving about an axis is called as rotational motion getting it or not <clears throat> okay now while the previous one as i told you the translational motion so when the body the when the when the whole body is moving in the same direction in the given uh, uh, given time period so that is called as the translational motion okay now any doubt on this please do let me know then look at the third type of motion that is the oscillatory type of motion so what do we observe in this oscillatory motion see for example a spring right now you see a spring it will be moving in a uh, it will be doing motion in a particular fashion it will be moving like this see if you wait to hold a spring and suspend it like it will be doing movement like this getting it what i'm trying to say so if you hold a spring like this so you have hold a spring like this and you release the spring so this is the type of motion which you will see see here they are compacted again contracted again contracted so they have contracted and then here they are relaxed right now so in a particular fashion they are doing movement right now so that is called as oscillatory motion getting it or not <clears throat> so we have example of that type of motion also that is it then periodic motion is what like the one the oscillatory motion which you have is studied i hope that is clear talking about periodic motion is what like when a particular type of motion when a particular type of uh, particular object will be repeating its motion after a fixed given uh, fixed time that is called as periodic motion like earth completes revolution in 365 and half days Three in three hundred sixty-five. In three hundred sixty-five, one fourth days. So in this much time period, Earth is completing its revolution, and has it been changing? Is it like the time period of Earth's revolution keeps on changing after every year? Obviously, no. Right now. so thereby it is revolving around the sun in a fixed period of time 
right now so it goes all around the sun and then returns back to its position and does the same motion again right so that is the thing over here that is called as periodic motion so you have several examples of periodic motion for example when you are beating a drum when you beat the drum so the membrane of the drum the thin sheet over the drum that is also doing movement in a particular rhythm so that is also periodic motion right now or you basically uh, pendulum consider the example of pendulum so when you look at the pendulum pendulum is also doing a particular type of motion and it is it keeps on repeating its motion after every fixed interval of time getting it up or not yes, sir. so let me write few points and then we will proceed okay. further yes uh Abu, your voice is stuck in. The revolution uh, of the earth is uh, hmm. the earth. Uh, yes, complete your question. Yes, Abu, I can't hear you. Oh, please complete your question. Uh, sir, the revolution of the Earth is uh, 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. So, you get to see that the one-fourth which I have written over here, that shows that it is one-fourth of a day. So, uh, it will be almost about 6 hours. Almost 6 hours. Getting it now. Okay. <clears throat> so, talking about translational motion, what did we studied about translational motion? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. What is translational motion? See, translational motion. So in translational motion, what is happening now? You have a person sitting under the car and the person along with the car, both of them are moving in the same direction. Right? So translational motion happens when all parts of the body moves in the same direction in the given time. That is it. So let me first write the definition. When uh, the whole section, section means part. So when the whole section of the body moves in the same direction, moves in the same uh, direction in the same amount of given time same amount of time so that is called as translational motion further you have two type of motions which are also studied under translational motion namely you have curvilinear motion and the next you have rectilinear motion can you tell me what are these? What is curvilinear motion and rectilinear motion? Can you tell me? Sir, curvilinear motion is uh, comes in a translatory motion. Mm -hmm. Curvilinear motion is uh, is uh, uh, is a uh, like um, uh, a line. Like it's like uh, only a line, but then it's a curve. It's a curve, curve line. Basically. Example, uh, the car on a curved yes. road. Curve. Curved road, very good. Or for example, talking about curvy linear motion. For example, race track. Right now, race track 
or uh, for example you have like the curved path like this so when an object is moving on a curved path so thereby it is performing a curvilinear motion right now so when the object is following a curved path right now so it is following a curved path so hence it is said to be doing a curvilinear motion right and when the object is moving in this all the parts of the body is moving at the same time so thereby it is a translational motion also no right now this is a car inside this a person is sitting so the car along with the person both of them are moving at the same amount of time in the same direction so thereby it is a translational motion also now talking about directly linear motion so if you were to see like an army which are marching past in a straight line or the cars moving in a straight on a straight road so those are all examples of rectilinear motion okay no so that is rectilinear motion so they bet is motion in straight line and motion in curved line right okay so if i were to say you in under a there are two type of motions b and c a is a type of motion further in a you study about two more type of motion what is a what is b and what is c a is a type of motion in which all parts of the body all sections of the body moves in the same direction the person sitting in the car is moving along with the car in the <laughs> in the same direction in the same amount of time they are not moving separately so that is a what do we call that for the a has two sub types which we just studied Yes, Abu. Translation. Translation. Translational uh, motion. Very good. Translational motion. What is B and what is C? Rectilinear and curvilinear. Rectilinear and curvilinear. Very good. can you give example of each curvilinear it is a race track and rectilinear it is a straight road hmm okay okay then so that is the two type of motions which we just studied and further you have another type of uh, motion that is a rotational motion okay so in rotational motion what we have studied do tell me hmm what do you mean by this what is rotational motion yes abu <clears throat> rotational motion hope i am audible to you yes sir what is rotational motion you can start by giving some examples of rotational motion Like rotational motion in this, what we have examples like a spinning top Sir, rotation uh, of. Mm -hmm. a ball. Which one? A spinning ball. A spinning ball, good. So all of them are doing movement around an axis, right now. So all of them are performing a movement around an axis that is Sir, in the. Earth. Right. Uh, repeat that again. Earth also, Earth also very good. Earth, Earth. is also. 
this is the axis of the earth so you have example of earth you have example of spinning top all of them are moving in circular direction around a fixed axis so that is what circular motion is so when movement um, it is um, defined as it's a type of motion in which the body is moving in a uh, moving about an axis right so when a body moves in a circular direction about an axis so these are the examples of it hope it is clear okay no so that is the rotational motion okay then uh, periodic motion what we studied about periodic motion when the motion keeps itself keeps repeating right now can you give some examples of periodic motions Yes, so what are some examples of periodic motion which we have? Hello. Yes, Abu, what are some examples of periodic motion? Like, for example, you the, throw a ball the and earth. It... Mm -hmm. the earth uh, uh, on the rotating around the sun, revolving around the sun, doing revolution around the sun. So, earth revolution, very good. For example, you take a jumping ball, you take a bouncing ball and you throw it. So that will also be doing a periodic motion. Okay, no? so you have example of bouncing ball. Then you have other examples also like for pen, example pendulum. So the pendulum will also be doing a fixed motion in a given period of time. A particular type of motion in fixed time interval. Right. So the bob, this is this circular structure that is this spherical structure that you see that is called as bob. Okay, no? B O B bob. So when you when you see the pendulum in a watch, in a clock, you get to see that it moves from its position A to B, and from position B it goes to position C and then again comes back to position A. Let me repeat. It moves from position A to B. And then from B, it moves to position C. And then from C, it comes to position A. So when it does this whole set of movement, whole set of motion, it is called as one oscillation. It is said to have completed one oscillation. Right now. And it will be taking a fixed time to complete this one particular type of motion, which is called as time period here right now so pendulum in uh, in uh, pendulum you get to see that in clocks that are having pendulum you get to see that it will be having a fixed time period right so in one oscillation you understand that it will be doing a particular type of motion where it will be moving from point a to b then from b to c and then back to a so that is said to be one oscillation and it keeps on repeating this set of motion keeps on repeating itself after a fixed interval of time so suppose it has done one oscillation in two seconds right and then in again in four seconds oh here is oscillation don't think of it as zero so then in four seconds it would have done two oscillations getting a double in six seconds it would have done how many three oscillations right now so in fixed time interval look at the time interval the time interval here is two here also the time interval 
time interval means that the difference in the time here. The interval means gap. Right. So the gap here is of two seconds. Two plus two, four, four plus two, six, right? So in fixed time interval, fixed type of motion is being done. Hope you are able to understand this. Right. Yeah. We have some other examples of periodic motion also. Like you can uh, uh, count example of a tuning fork also. Have you seen a tuning fork? No. Tuning fork is basically like this. A metal structure like this. You hit one end of it it will pro uh, vibrate at a very high speed. You hit, struck one end of the tuning fork, it will uh, uh, vibrate at a very high speed. All it done. So these are some examples of it. By the way, uh, we forgot one. You know the motion of a spring. Motion of a spring. That is also an example of periodic uh, uh, motion. All right now. So that you can also count. Yes, sir. Motion of spring <clears throat> by the way if we have we can have some other interesting examples also like uh, movement of artificial satellites around the earth right now getting it now so satellites will also be suppose this is a satellite for example so that will also be orbiting around the sun uh, orbiting around the earth getting it above so this is Earth, and there are satellites that are also orbit around the Earth. So are they also not doing a periodic motion? Yeah. Yes, sir. They are. Exactly. So circular and periodic motion of satellites. So satellites, they are weather satellites. They are. Uh, other type of satellites also okay no? so hope that is clear okay uh, so that's it in the different type of motions which we have and then like you have uh, circular motion also like circular motion is simple so when a body will be uh, moving in a circular direction about again here you will be having an axis so that is a circular circular motion so for example you tie a stone on a thread and you swing it, so that is a circular motion. Yeah, you have an example of fan. So fan is also doing a circulatory motion. All right now. This is, you go to a uh, fest. You see, you have this structure in the fest, like in the circular wheel. So that is also doing a circular motion. Sir, what is fest? This is structure over here. See, this is actually the rotating wheel that you see at first rotating wheel that you will be, you can see that in Disneyland in first, you can see it getting it now. So that is festival. Festival in festivals, you can, in festivals also, you can found in Disneyland also, you can found, found this. Okay. Now basically it is like there's, um, seats like attached to it now in which people would be sitting this is rotated and then people would be like basically sitting it on in order to have some fun like that okay now. sir uh in disneyland it is not there in disneyland it isn't there no i yes, think sir. so mm -hmm. disneyland uh, there is a disney character not theme park in theme park they would be in, in, in theme parks in theme parks will be having it correct okay now so here basic thing you get to we get to see that the body is moving in a circular direction right so when a body moves in a circular path its motion is known as circular motion so these are some of the examples of it right now the interesting thing you get to see here that the motion of the body, the motion uh, in this uh, um, circular motion, you get to see that the, this object, the object is remaining at the same distance from a fixed point. For example, this axle here is the fixed point in this body. 
So every point in of the body is at a fixed distance from this. What I mean to say that C. This portion of the object is at a fixed distance from the axle. This portion is also at a fixed distance. So every point in the object or every portion of the object is at a fixed distance from this fixed point. That is another characteristics of the circular motion. Getting it now. So note that in a circular motion, the circular motion, uh, the parts of object remains at a fixed distance from a fixed point. So hope that is clear. So if there's any other question in it, please do let me know. Yeah. Sir, the, uh, the name, like uh, you are saying, the name is, um, uh, its name is Ferris wheel. Uh, repeat that again. Sir, uh, you are saying that the uh, <laughs> wheel in the theme park, the wheel you're, you're saying is a uh, Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel. Uh -huh. Correct, correct. That is Ferris wheel. Mm -hmm. Ferris wheel. Okay. Good. Now uh, we get to see now that um, at a given period of time, we can have some examples in which two type of motions can be happening at the, simul uh, at the same time. Two type of motions can be happening simultaneously. Take the example of Earth. Earth is doing two type of motions. It is doing periodic motion also, and it is doing rotatory motion also now. Right now, Abu. So while it is moving around the sun, it is doing a periodic motion. So revolution of the earth is the periodic motion, whereas um, the rotation of the earth on its own axis, that is an example of rotational motion. Now we can have another example of a vehicle. For example, take a car. So in a car also, you get to see that it is doing several type of motions at the same period of time. Can you name some of them? A car is also doing several type of motions at the same period of time. Can you name some of them? <clears throat> uh... Rectilinear motion, curvilinear motion. Mm, it can be doing rectilinear motion if it's on a straight path. Curvilinear motion, very good. What apart from that, what motion do you find in that? Uh, sir, it also does periodic motion. That is not necessary. Sir, on the roundabout. Uh -huh, on the roundabout, you can see that. Well, when you say periodic motion now, so you can have a look at the wheels of it, right now, look at the wheels. The wheels might be doing a periodic motion if the vehicle is moving at the same speed right now. So for example, if the vehicle is doing a uniform motion, uniform motion means that if the speed of the body does not changes in the given time interval, like for example, the body is covering equal distances in equal interval of time. So for example, now let's say the body started from zero kilometer and it has covered five kilometer, then 10 kilometer, right? So this is five kilometer and then let's say this is 10 kilometer. So in order to, for the vehicle to move from zero to five kilometer, let's say um, it took one hour, right? And then here again, it took one hour. So you get to see that you are having equal difference here. You're having a difference of five. You are again having a difference of five right now. Here again, you are having an interval of how much here? One here now. See, let me write a zero over here. So if the body, if the body is covering equal amount of distance in equal interval of time, like in one hour it has covered five kilometer of distance 
and here look at the interval 2 minus 1 that is 1 hour is the difference so again in the next one hour it has covered the same amount of distance so when a body does such type of movement it is said to be in uniform motion getting it Abu? yes sir hmm. so if a body does such type of movement so thereby we can say that the wheels might be doing periodic motion okay when we talk about wheels so they are also doing one more type of motion that is rotatory motion and circulatory motion as well getting it above so wheels are doing circulatory motion right now they are doing circulatory motion now then question comes how they are doing a uh, rotatory motion sir, sir mm -hmm. uh, this question is a uh, translatory translatory motion also very good so the car is doing translatory motion also under translatory motion, as you already mentioned, it is doing rectilinear and curvilinear motion. Good. When you look at the wheels, it will be doing two types of motions. Let me zoom it out. So when you look at the different parts of the vehicle, look at the tire. So every part of the tire is at a fixed distance from the center of the vehicle. Right now. So that is what we studied in the circulatory motion. So yeah, it is doing. And then you look here that there will be <coughs> one more wheel at the other side now, isn't it, Abu? And they will be connected via an axle. So an axle is joining the two wheels. And you get to see that this wheel is actually rotating on the axle now. So axle is acting like an axis, a fixed axis on which the wheel is rotating. Getting it, Abu. Just like on a fixed axis, uh, or just like you have example of a spinning uh, top, right? It has an axis over which the spinning uh, it is spinning. So thereby, on the axis, the wheel is rotating. So thereby, it is doing rotatory motion also. Hope uh, it is clear. Is it? <clears throat> yes, sir. All right then, right? Okay, so I have got few questions over here. By the way, since uh, that part is not there in your um, syllabus, so you would be canceling these questions, okay now? So the ones which I am causing you are not required to answer that, okay? <clears throat> so the third one it is uh, we are in it is we are in motion we are in motion okay but uh, respect to car in respect to car are you in motion like if i am standing outside the car as an observer i am standing on the street so i would say that you know, the car is moving the person inside the car is also moving huh? but let's say that inside the car there are two passengers huh? There are two passengers inside the car. So those two passengers in respect to each other, are they in motion or rest? Rest. They are in rest. Right. So we will say that yeah, the person and the car, both of them are in motion when an observer standing outside the car sees them. But inside the car, the uh, person sitting inside the car with respect to car is at rest so in that manner you should be uh, able you should you have to explain it question number five <coughs> question number three is also cancelled railroads which invention led to the development of railroads <clears throat> What do you think? Yes. 
answer i don't know the question says now that which invention uh, led to the development of railroads so see the answer is actually steam engine steam engine why is it so you know that in the industrial revolution the most important revolution that happened was the steam engine right now so thereby when a steam engine was manufactured so thereby trains had to be manufactured and the trains will be running where in order for the trains to run railroads had to be laid out so ultimately it led to the development of railroads as well getting it abu yes yes okay now yes. so that is uh, what the answer should be here question number 7 So the seventh one also seventh one SI unit. What is the full form of it? Uh, It's international. International system of units, right? Now, system international usually it is said in French it is like system a international. That's how it is pronounced. But in English we say international system of units. Okay, now. A system a. A system a. International. Mm hmm. System international, but that is in French. In English, it would be international system of units. Okay, so that's it. I think we have finished the chapter with these questions. Some more questions are there. By the way, we have, although we have passed the time, uh, but match the given questions here. Match the column with column two. <clears throat> Question number one. Um. Uh, sir, um, C. Look at no, the sir, path. D. Huh? D. Rectilinear motion is what? Like when the body is moving in a straight line. Yes, sir. Uh, so, like a rail roads, see the track of the rail here. It's a straight track. Sir, but then the car is also moving in straight line. But the, here the pathway has been shown that it is a curved pathway. Had it been a pathway like this, so then we would have ticked this one. Then we would have matched this one. Okay, now, bro. Or had the railway track been like this? Then we would not have picked this one. Okay, now. Okay. First one is a uh, B. Second one is a uh, C. Third one is a uh, A. Fourth one is D. Uh, 